All right, MTV! Right, starts now! Woo! Whatever happened to predictability? The milkman, the paper boy, evening TV. Did I get delivered here? Somebody tell me, please. It's so My name is Autumn Villarreal. It is November 17th, 2020. We have some pretty talented teachers here on campus. Let's take a look at this video that Miss Cameron made. Rona, Rona, go away. Uh, I'm gonna stay healthy. Uh, yes I am. Rona, Rona, you can't get me. Uh, I'm gonna be careful. Uh, yes I am. my face stay six feet apart stay healthy healthy One of the things that I like to do is write lyrics and um, usually they're private. I usually don't publish them, but in this song, I thought it was a very good time to publish something that is important to the world. And I did. So I got up in the morning um, after waking up with the lyrics in my head went to my garage while everybody was sleeping and I started writing the song and I added music to it. Then I asked my brother to uh, make a video with me. So he's the one who recorded and then edited the video. Uh, thank God, cause I'm not, I'm, I'm not very good at that. <laughs> so um, it was a lot of fun. And the second part of the song talks a little bit about mental health. I think it's really important in this time that we take care of ourselves, especially our mental health. We need to make sure that we take walks outside, take breaks, talk to our family members, talk to our friends as much as possible, and also visit um, websites like Mrs. Doris's website, which is full of information, things that um, can help you, um, amazing resources, um, and stay calm, take care. Wow, pretty neat. And now let's click at this broader spotlight with Mr. Adams. The Larry King's Music Educators Association is our local MEA. At the state level, it's called CMEA, it's California Music Educators Association. And at this level, um, we represent Tulare and Kings County. Uh, we also represent all disciplines, band, choir, orchestra, and jazz. I was really excited to receive the award. I've been nominated several times and I've never been selected to receive the award. The two biggest musical influences in my life have been Dale Anderson, who was Menachee High School's first band director. Um, I was fortunate enough to have him as a teacher in high school. Um, and then the second one is Dan Nelson from Point Loma Nazarene University, um, who sadly passed away in 2010 uh, from a battle of, with Lou Gehrig's disease. But those two are my two biggest influences um, on how I've become and how I've become a teacher. Um, the other influence on me is also uh, my wife. She makes sure that everything I have to do to get to um, places and events are, are, are done. That includes pickup, dry cleaning, ironing if it needs ironing. So uh, Mrs. Adams or Jeannie does quite a bit for, for me. It's been a um, real awesome experience to be here at Menachee High School as I'm finishing 
or about a third of the way through my 20th year. Did you know that November 18th is Guinness World Record Day? Crazy. Let's take a look at some of the few world records you can break. Hey, so, um, little disclaimer, it's kind of like 1 a.m. right now, so I'm going to be speaking a little bit quiet. Um, I'm sure not many of you guys know, but November 19th is Guinness World Record Day, and a few staff members here at Manachi have attempted to do some of the world records. First up, we have Miss Conway and Mrs. Driver racing each other to see how many Skittles they can eat using only chopsticks. Miss Conway and Mrs. Driver actually went for a round two, but due to the time, we can't show the entire clip. Mrs. Driver does beat Miss Conway by three points. She manages to get the hang of it and eats seven, while Miss Conway discovers an extremely clever tactic and eats four. What? What? Mm -hmm. I'm getting this down now. I am not. Mm-hmm. What? 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 Nobody's gonna know. How would they know? Next up, we have Miss Reese and her cat Stranger's Purr. <laughs> that sounded like a dinosaur. Stranger's Purr I've ever heard, that's for sure. Last, we have Mrs. Persenio putting on as many shirts as possible in one minute. Hi guys, I'm Sotil Risenio, one of the counselors. Today I am trying to beat the world record, the Guinness World Record on the most shirts put on in one minute. So the record right now is 31. Oh my oh gosh. gosh! Okay, let's count backwards. How many do you have? Six. That's a seven. Seven. Eight. 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 I did eight. Oh my god, that's oh amazing! God. You're a winner in our eyes, Ms. Diseño. Thank you. Wow, that was impressive. I don't think I could ever do that. That was the last of it. Thanks for watching. Hmm. Have you ever been interested in woodshop? Me too. Well, I wonder how it's being taught over distance learning. Let's take a look at this video of Mr. Newbie and teaching woodshop. Hi, my name is Mr. Newbie and I'm the woodworking and cabinetry teacher here at Menachee High School. And I am just finishing up my 10th year here at Menachee. And so like I do with all my classes, I like to introduce myself, let them know a little bit about me, my history, how I ended up here. And uh, I hope to get to know my students through the year, a little bit more about them. Okay, so we're gonna talk about squares. The first square is the framing square. This is a framing square. And it's used for mainly two things in my classes. One is, if you have a large piece of wood, and you want to make sure that the corner of it is square. And what I mean by square is 90 <laughs> Hi, Mr. Newby here. And today, before we can get into wood joints, we need to talk a little bit about a piece of wood, a piece of solid wood, to be exact. Okay? Because we're going to be using terminology and different names for different parts of this board, 
And you, got, you need to know what I'm talking about so that we don't make mistakes, we don't have injuries. So let's talk about a piece of wood, a piece of solid wood. <clears throat> First of all, how many sides or parts does a piece of wood have? Any ideas? Six. <laughs> Mr. Newby here. Today we're going to talk about general safety guidelines. Those are rules that you follow while working in a shop environment. They're not specific to any one machine. They may have to do with that machine, but they may not. But it's just rules that you need to understand and follow while working out here so everybody... Shop immediately to avoid a slip and fall. We should not have a liquid out here. Um, we do have a sink here where we can wash our hands, clean up after class. If water gets on the floor, we want to clean that up so no one slips and falls here. When working in a finished room and you're staining your projects, when you're done, you have rags with stain on them. They need to be placed in the metal containers with the lid uh, tightly on them to keep uh, a fire from happening. So when you're done, we put them into these containers and we want the lid down. Another thing we have to look out for is hazards in the shop. So immediately report any hazard you see in the shop. Something that's not uh, necessarily a student doing something wrong, but maybe it's a stack of lumber or wood that might be look like it's going to fall over and could hurt someone or damage. Take me shopping. Wow, that's so cool. Well, I remember all my embarrassing moments at Menachi. I wonder what some of the teachers' embarrassing moments are. Let's take a look at his next video. This is Mr. Sundry. I teach U.S. History and World History. And uh, one of my most embarrassing moments was actually, I wasn't quite here yet. I was at Pioneer Middle School about, I don't know, 300 years ago. And uh, we used to play softball with the kids. And so, uh, you know, being that I wasn't that good, I was put out in right field. <laughs> I was not really not that good at all. And uh, anyway, of course, a pop fly comes towards me and I go running for it. And of course, I miss it. But I did jump to try to get it. And as I jumped, um, anyway, my pants ripped, I would say at least 24 inches, at least two feet. Pants just ripped, I mean like major rip. And uh, so um, I had snuck off the field. I don't think too many people noticed, but I did sneak off the field. And fortunately I had some sweats in my classroom and uh, yeah, quickly switched into those. But uh, yeah, that was it. <laughs> hey guys. This is Mrs. Baxter. Um, I think my most embarrassing moment teaching happened about four or five years ago. Um, my class was in the weight room and we were cleaning up the weight room at the end of the period, pushing benches in, racking bars, all that good stuff. So I was leaning over pushing a bench in and as I stood up, I hit my forehead right um, on the end of a weight bar, a 45 pound weight bar. So I immediately kind of put my hand on my head and was just holding it there because it hurt so bad. And as soon as I let go, um, I looked up, all the students were staring at me and one of my students said, Mrs. Baxter, you're bleeding. So I looked at my hand and I looked at my shirt and I was just bleeding everywhere. So I put my hand back on my forehead. I rushed all my students out of the weight room, um, sent them into the locker rooms. I had to call the office. Ended up going to the doctor and getting nine stitches, six in my forehead and three on the bridge of my nose. So needless to say, that was a pretty embarrassing moment for me. Missy Saif and I'm the technology Miss Missy Saif and I'm the technology media specialist here at Menachee High School. Probably my most embarrassing story this year, of course, has to deal with technology. I was in my fourth period class and it was early September, September 16th to be exact. And uh, my class is working, you know, I'm saying hi to them, waving, everything's, you know, awesome. Uh, and then of course I put myself on mute, or so I thought. Uh, You're still muted. You're still muted. You're still on mute. <laughs> Oh my God, I'm not <laughs> it happens. It happens to us all. You know, I was making a joke that 2020, the quote of the year is you're on mute. And my students were like, no, Mrs. Saif, uh, that's only an education. And um, oh yeah, that happened to me. 
I was on mute. So Oh, hi class. I'm, I'm your sub today here at Strathmore um, High School. So if you football boys, if you could move your bags back a little bit so that I don't trip. Oh, thanks. So that I don't trip and fall. Few moments later. So if you, if you can open your math books. To you good? So, but Menagee Kittles are just amazing and we laughed, we had a chuckle, and <laughs> life goes on. <laughs> oh wow, those are pretty embarrassing. Well, lately I've been dancing a lot during quarantine. And that reminds me, we have a video on teachers dancing. Let's take a look at it. Come on, shake your body, baby, do that conga. No, you can't control yourself any longer. Come on, shake your body, baby, do that conga. No, you can't control yourself any longer. Hi Marauders, so a day in the life of a distance learning teacher. So my name is Mrs. Cardenas and I am new to Menachi and I teach English for 9th and 10th grade and then 11th and 12th grade and I teach an academic support class. I would like to share with you my daily life as a distance learning teacher, though there's really no every day, there's some constants, but really every day could be a different day. So we always start off with coffee, important. Muy importante. All right, so then uh, this is where I sit. So I sit to see my whole classroom, the front door. I always have two devices set up and my phone close by in case everything goes down or if parents or, or, or students are messaging me because things aren't working right for them. And then I always have my desktop that's right there. I have it ready to go just in case because sometimes things go down and that's just how it is. So I'm gonna pause this right now. When I log on to my first period, I'll do a fast forward of what the morning might look like. All right? All right, so at some point, all right, so at some point I was recording myself um, and my class 
and I had it on a time lapse, but I'm not quite sure how long it went. But I always end my class with a launch and um, make sure that I say hello and goodbye to my students. After class, I just make sure that I'm ready to go for the next class period, and then I uh, take a quick break and come on back and log back on. All right, thanks for uh, visiting me today. Bye. Lizard's got to bathe too. <laughs> Pop gets to go back and enjoy some crickets. Oh, she spotted one. <laughs> she spotted one. Oh, <laughs> good job, Puff. <laughs> Do you ever wonder what the teacher's classrooms look like now since we don't get to see them in person? Let's take a look at this MTV Cribs for the classroom edition. Welcome to my crib classroom. <laughs> <laughs> all, right. all right. As you can see here, we've got all the amenities of a fancy, smancy lab classroom. We got the shower. I got the eye wash station. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, safe eyes. Got the chemical fume hood. A wonderful floor to ceiling whiteboard. Almost. On tap. Ooh. Don't be jelly. I'm very jelly. My sliding white board with my super organized shelves. <laughs> that wasn't the organized part. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> and then my favorite part the big thing, my lizard. Jeremiah. The bullfrog. I've kissed him like four times. No prints. Anytime. <laughs> don't tell your Just husband kidding. that. <laughs> Just kidding. Don't. Don't kiss amphibians or reptiles. They all are potential carriers of salmonella. Oh, Good morning, Marauders. It's a beautiful November morning here on campus, and welcome to my crib. All righty. Now that I'm inside my room, take off my mask. All righty. So, this is my classroom. I am Mrs. Cardenas, and I teach applied English for both 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade. I said both, but for all grades. I also teach an academic support class. All right, so this is my crib. When we're back in session, this calendar will be filled out at least monthly with important dates and times. I've got a lovely map of Porterville and our amazing American flag. I like quotes and things. I have four that I still need to put up and some different resources on my boards. Up here is my weekly agenda that I take a picture of and post on my Google Cluster. And this is my distance learning area where I always have at least two devices open and running. Data, I'm a post-it notes queen, and of course, coffee. Yes, coffee's important, along with hand sanitizer. All right, you must always, always, always believe and believe in yourself. I believe in you, and I hope you believe in yourself too. All righty. I also remember, or sorry, not remember, <laughs> I also truly believe that when you do what you love, everything else falls into place. Hence that quote there. And always, always work to inspire others. All right, this is my desk. Encouraging you to think. On my desk, I have a dual monitor. This is like where I like to do a lot of my writing um, of lesson plans and IEPs and other documentation. Got my planners, some books, my dual monitor 
some filing. And here is my memory corner, or my important corner, where I have things that people have given me over the years, either notes, or gifts, or things that I've um, been given by students, or people that I've worked with. And so you can take a look, and we have something here. All right, Marauders, until we return in person, I hope that you know that you're amazing, that you're wonderful, that as hard as this is, you can do it. And I just hope to sooner rather than later be able to see you in person or see you again because I've been some of your guys' teachers before. And in the meantime, be wonderful, be amazing, and stay golden. Bye, y'all. All right, Marauders. My name is Autumn Villarreal, and I'm signing off.